Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the DRP Turkey, uh, Turkey's uh, 2022 uh, symposium's third, uh, third online session. And uh, now we are here to uh, listen to Berk Ceylan. Uh, Berk is a fourth year uh, or last year um, undergraduate student in um, at Bilgi University, Istanbul. Uh, Berk and I um, paired together in the program and we studied characteristic classes, which are uh, characteristic classes of vector bundles, which are um, homology classes of vector bundles. And they're uh, important geometric objects that actually unified uh, important fields in mathematics like algebraic topology, differential geometry, and geometric topology. And here, um, I would like to thank Berk for his time and commitment. And I really enjoy our discussions and I learned a lot from him. And now I would like to leave the floor to Berk to tell us about stifle Whitney classes. First, uh, I will do a brief introduction to the theory of vector bundles and uh, we will see how to construct bundles. And lastly, we will talk about uh, stifle Whitney class. <clears throat> A vector bundle in consists of a uh, total space 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 and a projection map, continuous projection map, and continuous and onto projection map from total space to base space, such that inverse merge of every base point in uh, projection has a structure for real vector space and the total space has a, has locally a product structure. If total space is globally a product structure, we call the bundle trivial, and we call each vector space as you, uh, attached to a point fiber over that point. Uh, dimension of fibers is always a locally constant function because of the local triviality. But if globally, if it's globally constant, we call bundle an uh, n-plane bundle. And you can define complex and smooth vector bundles. For example, if E and B are smooth manifolds and projection is smooth and uh, local charts are diffeomorphisms, we have a smooth vector bundle and complex is analogous. We have three examples. Uh, trivial bundle over any topological space is a vector bundle. And uh, characteristic classes are studied to distinguish between trivial and non-trivial bundles. Uh, tangent bundle, cotangent bundle, transform bundle, or uh, smooth manifolds are vector bundles, and smooth vector bundles. And we have the uh, canonical line bundle over RPN for NN, which is the um, simplest non-trivial example. Uh, you take S, a pair of antipodal points in SN and associate every equivalence class of pair of antipodal points in RPN, the line passing from origin and uh, corresponding points on SN. It's called the canonical line bundle. Uh, we call it line bundle because uh, uh, every fiber has dimension one, so it's a line. Uh, on left, it's uh, there is a generic uh, picture of a vector bundle, and in the middle, uh, we uh, there is a tangent bundle of S1. It is trivial. You can um, turn every line perpendicular to S1 to get to see it's a cylinder. And on right, uh, it's canonical line bundle over RP1. It's a Mobius band. Uh, or uh, morphisms between Vector bundles is called bundle maps. It consists of a pair, uh, pair of maps between base spaces and total spaces, such that uh, map of uh, total spaces respects fibers. It's actually easier to explain in diagrams. On left, it's a picture of a bundle map. If this diagram is commutative and such f and f prime exist. We call the pair F and F prime a bundle map. Come to the off diagram means fiber over B is mapped to the fiber over FB. And on the right, we have the notion of equivalence over vector bundles, over uh, off vector bundles, over same base space. Uh, we, we take F to be identity. So we have a diagram of this. And if this diagram is committed and F prime is homeomorphism, we say C and eta are uh, isomorphic vector bundles. 
we can also take f prime to be just continuous because uh, it's a locally a collection of invertible matrices in local charts and you can take all their inverses to get uh, the inverse map. Uh, sections are generalizations of vector fields or smooth manifolds. It's a map from base space to total space, such that when you take the composition with projection, it gives us identity. It means a, a, a point in base space is mapped uh, to a vector in the fiber over that point. And if you have a collection of sections which are nowhere dependent and uh, which are everywhere, Linearly independent for every base space, uh, base point. We call them nowhere dependent. You can observe trivial bundles always have nowhere dependent sec collection of sections, and converse also true. If a bundle is uh, a bundle is trivial if and only if uh, there are nowhere dependent sections. Now we will study canonical line bundle over RPN. We will study sections of canonical line bundle over RPN to show that. These bundles are uh, non-trivial for every end. It's a picture of section. Take any section of canonical line bundle and uh, uh, put it back to SN with composition of SN to RPN. Then you get a real valid function T such that T minus X is equal to minus TX. Then when you take any path, path uh, between X and minus X, and apply uh, intermediate value theorem, you get a zero somewhere on the path. And then you project that zero to RPN, you get the zero of the section. So every section of a conical line bundle has a zero, which shows it is non trivial. Uh, if tangent bundle of a smooth manifold is trivial, we call the manifold parallelizable. Lie groups are parallelizable, and S2 is not parallelizable since it has no non zero, no nowhere zero vector fields. Uh, the definition of sub bundle if if fiber over one bundle is always a sub vector space of the other we call it a sub bundle and if you can if you uh, a, a metric is a continuous way to associate each fiber with an inner product trivial bundle has a trivial metric and we use metric in this presentation to form orthogonal complements of sub bundles. Uh, for smooth manifold, metrics are called Riemannian metric. And you can show using partition of into that any vector bundle over a parking back space as a metric. Now we will see three ways to construct vector bundles. Uh, first is if you have a continuous map and range has any vector bundle structure, you can pull back that structure to the domain to get a vector bundle structure. And if you have two bundles, you can form a product bundle by taking product of everything. Uh, on left, we see the pullback bundle. Uh, you pull back the fiber of F B prime to fiber to be the fiber of B prime. And on right, it's product bundle. You can also sum two vector bundles over same base space without uh, taking the product of uh, base space with itself. This is not so trivial by saying that let's just take uh, every, uh, just direct sum every fiber because you don't uh, give a topology to the top of total space that way. But there is a way to give topology. Just take a diagonal embedding of base space to its. Uh, product with itself and uh, pull back the bundle C times eta. Uh, with me sum is natural in the sense if uh, C is sum of two sub bundles and um, if C has the property that each fiber over C is sum of two fibers over two sub bundles, then C is itself a direct sum and um, a with me sum of sub bundles. And in particular, for if you have a metric, um, you can decompose to see with any subpuzzle and its orthogonal component. Component. Um, here's a picture of fitness. Huh? 
now I will define staff with me classes and assume they exist. Uh, HI will mean uh, art single college group. We, it's the, uh, the Z over two Z coefficients. We want staff with me classes to be a sequence of uh, college classes of base space such that the zero term is unit element of zero homology. And if you have an M plane bundle, homology in the sequence is zero after N. <clears throat> and the second axiom is called naturality. If you have a bundle map, then pullback of the homology class of one, pullback of the Stifobitnik class of one is equal to the other. Uh, this is axiometry is called uh, Whitney sum uh, formula. It uh, it relates sum of uh, Whitney class of sum of vector bundles to Whitney class of summons. An axiom for is a non-degenerate axiom. We want line bundle over R T one to have a non-zero self Whitney class. Um, the idea is that uh, it's the simplest non-trivial vector bundle. So we, we want uh, Stafford-Me classes to distinguish this uh, bundle with the trivial ones. Now let, let's look at some simple consequences. By natural axiom, if two vector bundles are isomorphic, their classes are equal because uh, pullback of the identity is identity. <clears throat> and uh, by axiom, the trivial bundles have all but zero to self classes. Zero, this is because, because trivial bundles have bundle maps with range uh, at a vector bundle over a single point. So their pullback is zero, except for uh, zero to class. So, and so we have a uh, summing with trivial bundles does not change uh, characteristic classes. And if we have a building metric on a bundle and a, in a, a trivial car plane bundle, then all the classes after n minus k should be zero. Uh, total total Whitney class is formal sum of all Whitney classes, and axiom two becomes this simple formula. And we know uh, elements of uh, ring of formal series in with coefficients in homology with leading term one are invertible. So if the sum of two bundles is trivial, then Whitney class of the sum should be one. And since uh, it's equal to um, uh, multiplication of Whitney classes, uh, one is equal to inverse of the other. So we have uh, a Whitney duality theorem for a smooth manifold and Britain are for some man. The tangent uh, Whitney class of tangent bundle is, is equal to inverse of the Whitney class of normal bundle. Uh, this is because normal bundle uh, sound with uh, tangent bundle is trivial. Now I will calculate some examples, uh, some Nicholas examples. So. We will denote uh, WM for uh, for a smooth manifold to be uh, with me class of the tangent bundle. And it is known by CW complex structure on RPN that uh, singular homology with Z mod 2Z coefficients is Z mod 2Z for I between 0 and N and 0 device. And uh, if we take the non zero element in first cohomology and take cup product of its, uh, with itself, we get all the generators of cohomologies, non zero cohomologies. Mm -hmm. Canonical embedding of ascent or has 
trivial normal bundle. So class of Sn is equal to one. So uh, by Whitney George theorem, so Whitney class does not distinguish between uh, between trivial bundles over Sn and uh, tangent bundle of Sn. Uh, the conical bundle over RPN has total class one plus a, where a is the non-zero element in first cohomology. And this is because you can see a conical line bundle over RP1 a embedded in RPN. So you get the, you can take the pullback. And orthogonal complement of conical line bundle is a a class of orthogonal complement of conical line bundle is given by this formula because a uh, conical line bundle is sub bundle of a trivial bundle. Uh, this is how how to weave a uh, tangent bundle of um, projective space from a uh, tangent bundle of SN. If you have a path going from passing from X with a various degree and you uh, take the image of that path in antipodal map, you get a path from uh, passing from minus x with minus v velocity. So you need to uh, glue these vectors together to get uh, tpn. And each such pair, x, v, and each such equivalence class will give us a homomorphism between line passing through minus x, x, and origin, and orthogonal complement of that line. So we have this isomorphism where T is the tangent bundle of uh, RPN. <clears throat> and uh, if we sum uh, T with a trivial bundle, we get N, uh, N plus one times the canonical line bundle. Uh, you can just see it, see it uh, and by observing a trivial line bundle is actually homomorphism bundle from conical line bundle to itself. So you just manipulate that uh, the first item and you get this isomorphism. So now we can calculate the total class of RPN. It's given by this formula. And we have the following term. Uh, Total class of RPN is equal to one. If you know if n, n plus one is a power of two, and uh, proof uh, plus from the fact that uh, square of sum is the sum of squares in z mod uh, z mod two z, so one plus a over two over a is equal to one plus a over two over a, and if n plus one is uh, a power of two, then since uh, two over r is greater than n, we have total class equal to one. And if uh, n plus one has an odd factor, then by expanding this, we see the first term is actually one, and but second term is n times a over two r, and two, two over r is less than n, so n times a over two r, is now zero, so Whitney class should be now zero. And actually, we have this fact projective space is parallelizable if and only if n equals one, three, or so. Thank you.